welcome back to my channel according to Kat. If you are new here, please introduce yourself in the comments below. If you're returning, just say hi. And what are we gonna be making today? Okay everyone, today we are making three really cute farmhouse DIYs. I love how natural they are and they have so many like earthy elements, so I just love how all three of these turned out. If you would like to learn how to make them, make sure you stay tuned. If you'd like to know what supplies I've used, check out the description box below. And with all that being said, let's get right into the video. Okay, let's start out with DIY number one, three succulent tray. So the first thing I did was I took these two little signs from the Dollar Tree. They were back in the fall, Harvest Blessings, and I am just opening them up on one side. Now, this little thing, the hanger there on the back, I keep those because I make little stands out of them. So I like to keep anything I can, and yeah, I keep that. So I just take off the one side, and you can see it kind of ripped the you know, the paper that's on it. That's okay, because we're going to paint this anyway. So right here, this part opened up a little bit, so I'm using my fix-all glue from the Dollar Tree and some hot glue, and I'm just joining that together, and that'll stay just fine. So the fix-all glue reminds me of E6000, and it's not as harsh a smell, so I really do like that, and you get it right from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm some, taking some larger popsicle sticks you can also get at the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to hot glue them right in between those two parts of the tray, and that will help hold it together. So I'm using Fix All and the um, the hot glue to make sure it stays. The Fix All will hold it permanently, as the hot glue will hold it instantly. And again, we're going to be painting this so you won't even notice that it's a different color. And I'm doing that to both sides. Now, this tray isn't going to be strong enough to hold the three glass um, jars to be walking around with them, but it's fine if you're keeping it set on the table. I just wouldn't walk around with it as if it was a tray. Now I'm taking my Dollar Tree sanding sponge and I am just going over the whole thing just so that it lets the paint kind of grip to it a little bit. Now I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in Elephant, which is a very dark gray, and I love this color, and I'm just gonna give this a good coat. I do go back and give it a touch up, so not really a full second coat, but just any places that I thought were a little thin. And the reason I didn't give it a whole second coat is because we're gonna be going on top of this with a few colors, just so it doesn't look so flat and make sure you get into all of the crevices, especially with the first coat. Now I'm taking some antique wax from Waverly and I'm just going over it and this is gonna give it some depth. So I want it to have a gray brownish look to it, kind of like a wooden, I don't know, like old wooden wood. <laughs> you know, like barn wood type of thing. So I really wanted it to look like old barn wood. So now I'm going back over it with some of the elephant again. Now, at this point, it's not completely dry. So some blending's going on and I'm okay with that. So when I go in to, so this is my plaster, Waverly Chalk Paint in Plaster. You get all of this from Walmart, by the way, all that paint. Now, when I do I kind of get an idea of the colors I want to use, but I have no idea how many times I'm going to go over it or in what order I'm going to do it in. I just keep going over it until I like what I see. So now I'm going back over with a chippy brush and plaster, and then I thought, oh, there's too much white on here. So I go back with that same chippy brush in um, some elephant until I got a color that I liked. So now I'm just taking my hot glue and some twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna wrap it around twice and <laughs> it's not even on. Oh yeah, let's start that over. And I'm gonna wrap it around twice and then I'm just gonna put little dabs of hot glue, just kind of hold it in place, but it doesn't need to be, I don't like run beads of hot glue along the whole thing. Just a little, I just to tack it down here and there. And then once I do that, I cut off the extra and then I hot glue it right in the back. Just a little bit. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to put a little twine bow in the front. So I make a tiny little bow and I'm going to hot glue that right off to the side. I don't put it directly in the middle. It's more to the left a little bit. And then I will cut off those strings. A little bit more. And you can see those three square 
jars. I guess they would be for flowers or candles. And they are from the Dollar Tree along with these stones that you also get from the Dollar Tree. And at first I was gonna leave them halfway, but when I took the Dollar Tree succulents that I have here, um, they didn't fit in the actual candle holder. So I decided to build up the stone so that it, the succulent's sitting right on top. Cause I didn't wanna, I mean, I guess I could have taken off the bottom layer of the succulent, but I didn't really want to. So I just added some more stones, build it up higher, and then laid my succulent right on top. So my branch cutters didn't really cut that wire all that well. So I cut what I could and then I just bent it back and forth and it broke right off. So that was perfect. And then I laid it right on top and this is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. Looking up at a tree, I remember how it started. I was lost in a dream when the fire in my heart said an open rose. I've already found some light, the feeling grows. And anything sounds alright, I'm breaking loose. Living in the so moment. Let's move on to DIY number two, but before we do, let me tell you about the scavenger hunt. So I was asked to participate in this scavenger hunt giveaway, and of course, yes, I got to meet some new people. There's some old friends participating, and it's always fun making new friends, right? So I found out that we are going to be giving away a Cricut Joy. All of us creators are so thankful to all of you who help build our channels, watch our channels, support our channels, and sometimes we just want to give back. So this is our way to give back and what better than a Cricut Joy? So let me tell you how you can enter to win this Cricut Joy. So in order to qualify, you need to watch all eight videos in the hunt and comment. You're gonna collect a secret word from each channel. So each one of us creators is going to tell you a secret word. Once you have all eight of those words, you are going to email all eight words to us in DIYScavengerHunt at gmail.com. I will leave that email also below. Then in two weeks from today, the day that we post, which is February 6th, two weeks from February 6th, we are going to draw a winner. And if that winner has all eight secret words and commented on all eight of our videos, then they get to win a Cricut Joy. So the winner will be announced in all our community tabs and Instagram. The only thing you need to know, it is only open to the continental US just because there are so many rules and regulations that go into it when you start opening it up abroad. I do apologize for that, but everyone in the US, you can absolutely enter and yeah, I am so excited for this. So I am wishing all of you good luck. So make sure you go check out everyone's videos in the playlist and find all eight of those secret words. I will tell you my secret word in a minute, but first moving on to DIY number two, and that is our rope tray. So there are two rope options you have here. So the first there's the Dollar Tree rope, and you get 7.5 feet for a dollar. And it's really great rope, but this rope is 164 feet for $9 and change. So if you do the math, you are so much better off buying it from Amazon. And if you get a good deal like that, Absolutely. And plus, when I'm gluing it around, I don't have to keep stopping and adding another rope where you would see those um, those breaks, which is fine. But if I don't have to see those breaks, why would I want to see those breaks, right? So all I'm using is hot glue. And this dollar plate from the Dollar Tree is one of those chargers. And I've had it for a while and it cracked right on the side. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with this now. But I'm like, you know what? I want to use 
I wanted to make a rope tray for a while. And so I thought this is perfect because you won't see it anyway. Now, recently, as I was editing this video, I saw that Liz Fenwick from Liz Fenwick DIY. I love her channel. I'm sure you've seen her. If you haven't, make sure you do. She's one of my favorite creators. She made a rope tray. Um, very cool. I think it was a Pottery Barn dupe. I want to say it was Pottery Barn where she painted the edges. Very cool. I will link that below. Yeah, so she made a rope tray as well, but I'm using a charger and I am just going right around with my hot glue. Only thing you wanna be sure of is that you are putting the hot glue on the plate and on the bottom part of the rope so that that glue isn't seeping up so you will not see it. And if you are liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and also tells me what kind of videos you want more of. And now I'm just working my way around here and you can see that I'm going right up to the edge. And right when I got to the end of this, I put one more ring straight around just to make sure you didn't see any of the charger plate underneath. Then I cut that at a diagonal, whatever rope was left over and I glued it down behind the back of the plate. And I'm just pressing that in. So you can leave your plate just like this and with no handles. I think it looks awesome. I love it, but I wanted to add handles. But before I do that, I am going to burn off any extra fuzz with this Amazon rope that I got. It really didn't have that much fuzz and it was actually pretty much perfect, but I just went around to touch it up. Now you're going to see the difference when I burn off the fuzz on the Dollar Tree rope. Now look how much thicker it is, but I decided to use this as the handles because I thought it would give it some variation. So I'm just putting knots on either ends, but before I hot glue those down, I'm going to burn off any extra like, you know, fringe that's sticking out. It scared me so bad because usually I'm good about it, but it was flaming up like all crazy. And I was like, I'm going to burn my basement down. But I had water to the side. If you do not feel comfortable doing this, do not. But I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you when I was doing it, I was like terrified. I'm like, I'm going to burn my basement down. And all I did here was just hot glued it right there to the front. Now you can hot glue it to the back, but I decided to hot glue it right to the front and just used a little hot glue on both of those knots and kind of made it the, the handle kind of loop up and around a little bit. And so cute. There's so many different ways you can style this. You can leave it as a tray on your coffee table and put drinks on it, or you could put a candle on it, but just don't burn a candle on it because, you know, fire hazard. Or you could hang it on your wall, or you can um, put some succulents on it. There's just so many different ideas. And this is done. I hope you like this as much as I do. Lost again, going back. Of a time when I get things right Lost in the shadows of a million stars Shouldn't they enlighten my near and far Shouldn't they at all just tell me where you are Send a prayer if I'm out of luck Send a little love and I'll make it back And last then we have number three and let's call it a striped face so the first thing I did was I took this alcohol and a paper towel and I am giving this a Dollar Tree milk vase a really good wipe just to make sure like oils and fingerprints are off of it even though I'm fingerprinting it all up right now so that way the the spray paint can stick better and I'm using some painters tape and making a few stripes so that when I spray paint it you will see through the clear glass at those points. Now, I will tell you, it's better to do the top stripe and the bottom stripe and then do the middle stripe. You can see I did take it off and reposition it so that it was centered a little bit. You don't even need to make it centered. All the stripes could be different sizes and that's fine too, but I just kind of fixed it and went right back around and made sure it was as centered as I could get it. Now I'm taking this bonds to everything, bonds to plastic, bonds to glass, two times Rust-Oleum spray paint. I love it. It's an heirloom white and I'm going to give that a 
good couple coats and make sure you do light coats. Don't do heavy coats or it will drip. I just left that out to dry. Now I am taking the bottom part or the end part of a belt and I save all my belts or when I go to yard sales or thrift stores, I pick up old belts. They're so cheap and you can use them to craft. So I'm cutting off right above where I made that hole with a tiny screwdriver and I am just taking some twine and feeding it right through that hole I just made and it was not too hard to make that hole and I decide I'm going to notch the top of it a little bit just to kind of round out those edges and so cute you could use either side I'm going to use the darker side and I'm going to pair it up with some burlap ribbon which I'll show you in a minute I decided that I wanted to put some wooden beads right at the top of where the belt is so I'm going to tie a couple knots right here just where the the belt meets up with the twine and then I'm going to take these beads that I got from Michael's yes in the holiday section and they were like 75% off I got a very very good deal on them and then I use them to craft and then I'm just beading two beads right onto that twine and then I will put two knots right on top of those beads And that's it for that. I always like to hang something around my vases. I don't know why. And I like to use different things. I was going to use a wooden, like, like a little tag, a wooden tag. But I've done that before. So I wanted to do something different. And I saw this part of a belt sitting there and I thought why not so I got these mini letters off of Amazon I tried to find them to link them I couldn't find them right away my husband's on it he told me he's gonna look for me I couldn't find it right now but I will link something similar but I can't always find the wooden letters at Dollar Tree and this was a great deal I got a whole like I don't know seven sets or something in that wood little wooden box and yeah, I'm going to be using them for crafts and I love it. So I took this burlap ribbon from burlapfabric.com and I'm just kind of pulling off some strings there and I'm just wrapping it right around this part of the belt, cutting it and hot gluing that in place. And that's just going to add another layer, another dimension to the belt the belt tag. We'll call it the belt tag. And I picked K for cat and I'm putting that right on there. I didn't know what I was going to pick. There were so many different choices, but I just went for K for cat. And I just put a dab of hot glue right on that letter. And I really liked the size of the letter, the letters. They are smaller than the Dollar Tree ones, but I really like them. But I can never find those Dollar Tree ones. And once you go through one bag, like it's, you need like several bags to make words sometimes because you need a couple E's or a couple M's, whatever. So you know what I mean. So now I'm just taking off that painter's tape and you can see that I am revealing those stripes. This is the most satisfying part of using painter's tape, but you can see there were some sections that were not completely clear, um, just a little bit seeped under, mu not much at all, but I'm gonna show you a couple ways to clean that up. It looks so cool. So the w first way is just to use like an X-Acto knife, a little blade, something like that. And that worked out just fine. And the other way, this worked out even better, actually. I had Pledge sitting down here next to my craft area. And I'm like, let me try this. Who knew? It works. I used the paper towel and I'm just like using my nail a little bit with that Pledge. All, anything that kind of sprayed under came right off. I never knew that would work. Now, this is the Dollar Tree... Um, twine and again this was a little fuzzy as well so I did <laughs> see it's up like up in flames so now it is time for the secret word for the scavenger hunt and my word is kindness kindness is so very important to be kind to everyone not only will it change someone else's life but it will change your life so my secret word is kindness and speaking of kindness, I just want to thank everyone out there who sent me so many prayers and well wishes. I know if you follow me on Instagram, I had posted that my mom had passed from cancer last week. And um, sorry, I just want to thank everyone out there who was so kind and loving. You don't know how much that means to me. You guys are, are friends of mine, and I mean that. You guys are amazing and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart.
for your support, your friendship, and your prayers. Thank you so, so, so much. I love you guys. And to be honest, I couldn't even wait to get back to crafting because it is a form of mindfulness to, for me and it helps me so much. And to be able to talk to you, that helps me so much. So thank you again. And this is finished. I hope you like this as much as I do. We were young and we were free and running Never bothered about what could be coming Every day we danced and life was smiling We were young and drunk in love A few years later I have started thinking If it's just love in every glass I'm drinking we're like And here we are at the final reveal, my favorite part of the video because we get to recap everything we just made. So the first thing we made was the three glass holder using all Dollar Tree products. And I love how this looks. It looks a very farmhouse, a modern farmhouse in my opinion. And then we have the rope plate. I love this because it's so natural and you can use it in so many different ways and style it up in so many ways. And then last but not least, we have the striped glass vase. And I just love how that one turned out. So I'm going to ask you right now, you tell me which one is your favorite and I'm going to surprise myself with this one. I picked the glass vase. This was my afterthought DIY and for some reason I am like in love with it. You tell me in the comments below which one is your favorite and don't forget to go find all eight of those words in the scavenger hunt to win that cricket joy. Everything's linked below. So that's it. That's the end of my video. I hope you liked everything you saw here today and I hope it inspires you to make something of your own. If you have not checked me out at Instagram over at Cat Luna Designs, please do so. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And if you haven't subscribed, I would love if you did. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. Turn, 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 no, turn, there. So that's, oh, okay. <sighs> if you have not checked me out at Instagram over at Cat Luna Designs, please, nah. That's like the one place I always goof up.